How you been? Good, man. You know how I've been. I've been with you for a month and a half. We finally get to do this in person. In person. Uh, and I'm so excited for it, bro. I think this is session number three, me and you. Yeah, it is. I'm pumped. We didn't make it all the way to a year, though. Well, I'm probably not going to see early. you for ages, to be honest. Until November. Yeah, but you never know what could happen. That's true. Yeah, so that's true. it's better to do it earlier than later. Yeah, I agree. And no we get, we're in person, so it's better to do it in person. Yeah, 100% agree. Um, shout out to all the Be A Wolf listeners. Uh, I'm super pumped for this session. Uh, can you believe it? This is session number 93, 93 Mondays in a row. Mm. And you know who I am. My name is Nas versus Wild. Uh, and if this is your first time tuning in, this is a high production session. I'm not going to lie. We've got three cameras. This session is going to be released on YouTube and it's going to be a good one. Um, but this, if this is your first time listening, um, I'm a full-time creative entrepreneur from South Auckland. I was born in a rural Fijian village called Lombasa, Bunilaka. And my mission in life is to write a story that beats longer than my heart. Now, we got an exciting and probably one of my best friends on today's session. Uh, make sure you go listen to the two other episodes with Peyton before you listen to this one, just so you can follow the sort of journey we've been on over the last sort of two to three years. And uh, I'm excited to have you in the studio in South Auckland. Me Mr. Too. Colorado is in New Zealand, in South Auckland. Yep. I've been calling him that the whole two months he's been here. <laughs> I like it. Uh, it fits. <laughs> and man, I'm excited. Yeah, me too, man. It's it's uh, the end now of the trip. I go home on Wednesday, but it's chill. Yeah, we've. I, I actually feel like it's a lot better that we did this at the end because now I actually have like all the experience and everything to talk about. So it's good. If we would have done this at the beginning, it would have been kind of boring. So hundred percent. And ha- tell me, uh, ha- on an American perspective, mm-hmm. how did you find New Zealand? Well, I mean, there's there's a couple different things to that. So I'll start with like what I, what I was expecting. Um, I was expect, so the first time I came to New Zealand, I didn't get to explore anything. Right. So I didn't really have like that. I didn't really have that perception that you have of a country when you first visit there. And then you get to like, Oh, this is, this is how it was different than how I thought it was. I didn't get that because I didn't actually get to explore. So when I was coming back, I still had like all of the, all of the things in my mind about what I thought it was going to be that I had to see if it lined up or not. Um, some of those things were like, obviously I knew, I, I just had an overall sense that New Zealanders were going to be like nicer and friendlier than Americans almost. And I think that for the most part did play out. That was true. Um, but I think the things that shocked me the most about New Zealand that I didn't expect was like the health aspect. Colorado is such like a, a health bubble. Like obviously the U S isn't like generally healthy, but Colorado is like very healthy, right? And when I came here, like, dude, my diet has been shit. Like, I I feel like my my overall health has like gone down. And obviously, that's like partly because of our routine and like our schedule. But that su- that did surprise me, you know. But no, I New mean, New Zealand's got a pretty high obesity rate. Yeah, but but Milford Sound, mm-hmm. like, it easily top three places I've ever seen in my entire life. Like, I've been to Patagonia, Iceland like so many national parks in america like that that's top three for sure blew my mind wow that was one of my favorite days of my entire life wow and i got to do it with my brother connor so shout out to connor miss you bro <laughs> <laughs> love it and and so in terms of like new zealand and south island like mm-hmm. um what was like how's the mountains and what did, did you take any like what's the content that you feel like you enjoyed the most or the experiences mm. i mean so we took the bus down for Connor and I took the bus down for like two and a half weeks. Mm. So we got to stop in so many different places. Um, I I think North Island is really like tropical almost and like so lush and so green and and, and like rainforesty. And the vibe, as soon as I got on the South Island, like although there was still a lot of that, it was like very much straight into like the mountains, a little bit more dry. Mm. Um, and that's like, that's what I'm used to. That's what I like. So that the, the South Island definitely felt more my, my vibe. Mm. How did um, you find the overall energy? Between the islands or yeah, just in general? Just in general. I think, I mean, dude, everywhere we were going was so touristy, which I kind of hated. Um, but it was good. Like it's, it's good energy. Like we went to, uh, one of my favorite experiences of the trip on the South Island was Tekapo. Have you been there? Yeah. Or Tekapo, I think that is how they pronounce it. And, uh, there's this church there called the church of the good shepherd. And Connor and I went to a service there, which was crazy. And it's like a, it's like a Catholic church basically, which we weren't raised Catholic. So it's, 
it's a little bit more like traditional and like they sing hymns and stuff but to get to like sit on lake tekapo in that church was insane and get to go to a service there Wow. But no, I mean, overall vibes are super good. I, lo- I love New Zealand. That's good. Yeah. So uh, I wanted to talk about this because mm-hmm. um, Tourism New Zealand puts a picture of New Zealand out. Mm-hmm. And realistically, how did you find, like, obviously you were at South Island, Auckland. Like, how did you see the combination? And also, like, obviously the environments that we live in and, and the places that we work and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. What was the, did you see any differences? Yeah, absolutely. I think, I mean, obviously you can't, you can't, like, tell the full story of what a country is through a tourism website, you know, like that's, that's never going to be accurate anywhere. Um, but as a tourist, you expect that image that you were like presented to be the actual way that it is. Um, and so that's, that's, I mean, there weren't any like huge fundamental differences that I was like, Oh wow. Um, this is like not at all what I, what I thought it would be. It was more so just like, you're only getting 10% of the picture, right? It's like, it's almost like the dynamic with Instagram versus how people's lives actually are. It's like, they're choosing the highlight reel, right? Like the tourism website's just choosing the highlight reel. So every time we went to one of those places that they were featuring, like, yeah, it matched what they said it was, Mm. but that's not the 90% of like people's lives in New Zealand. That's not the whole other side that I was exposed to like shooting with feature for a while. You know, that's the part that was really like, but I honestly, dude, I think, Aside from all the traveling, my biggest thing about New Zealand that I got from this trip that was unexpected was the whole Hindi Indian culture side of things. That was something that I have had very little experience and and, uh, understanding of until this trip that I was not expecting at all. Like I was really excited. And when I was telling people that I was going to come down here to shoot weddings, I always mentioned that, that like feature was a more of like a cultural weddings thing. Mm. Um, but I did not, I didn't expect to, to get as much of like a, a culture smack as I did. And that's, it was really cool. That's, I'm yeah. so glad you got to experience it. And yeah. just to give all the listeners a backstory, uh, Peyton flew over for like literally our busiest summer, the busiest time that our creative agency ever has. Mm. And, and he's literally been the biggest helping hand um, to literally get us off the ground. We did like so many weddings between Australia and New Zealand yeah. over the last sort of two, two months. And it's like literally every week we've been pretty much packed out yeah and we've been shooting four or five days straight and these cultural weddings can be pretty hectic yeah um and man i'm so glad because i remember we were sitting in the car going to a shoot once and you were like you know i feel like i've been all over the world i've, yeah. I've experienced every culture yeah but i've never had the opportunity to experience indian culture yeah. and all the rituals and the traditions and the values yeah and and you're like you're like it's like god put me in this mm-hmm. position for a reason so mm-hmm. I, it can help me understand it yeah Do you remember? actually yeah that was a moment so that was the the second wedding that we had done and we were at the pullman hotel and i was just kind of sitting over with the gear um it was like getting getting winding down towards the end of the night and i was sitting over with the gear while you guys were still shooting like the dance floor And I was just thinking in my head, like I was just thinking to myself exactly what you just said, like, wow, you know, it's kind of interesting, like out of like, I felt like I was so cultured. And I mean, I, I, I do think I have a good grasp on, on the various cultures, but I thought I had like, you know, known it all. And, uh, I was sitting over in the corner, just like thinking like how surprised I was at how little I knew about like Indian and especially like Hindi culture. And immediately as I thought that I heard God say to me, that's why I put you here. And it was just so like, I'm like, oh, okay. Like it, forget all of like the things about New Zealand that I was still going to see, forget about all the time with like Connor and you and like all this, like those were all components. But like, I really felt like a huge one that he was showing me was he brought me here to like really understand that culture in a way that I hadn't. And that was really cool. So, and obviously that was only the second wedding we went on to shoot three or four more after that. We just finished a a 15 hour one two days ago just caught up on I, sleep literally i felt right this last night was the first night i slept really good mm, i like dreamed like i literally went into deep sleep and yeah. i was like dreaming the whole night yeah, and down. like the visuals of that dream was crazy but it's funny what a little bit of sleep can yeah. do yeah can we just talk about sleep and how important sleep is <laughs> i've been trying to tell you bro <laughs> I'm, I'm like the only guy you. that gets the bro problem. i have i have such a deep respect for you after this trip truly man like mm-hmm. You, you have that, whatever it is that ta- it takes to be an entrepreneur, like you have it in, in a buttload, you know, I'm so proud of you. And like, it's been such a cool 
thing to just watch you in action. I think you definitely need to take care of yourself <laughs> a little bit better. Like this guy can go so long and he's always got to like bring the energy to whatever we show up at. You know, he, he's always like, he's the, you're the face. You always got to show up and you got to be the one who like keeps it going. So that, that kind of comes with like some sacrifices, you know, at the, at the expense of like your mental and physical health sometimes. But man, I'm just like, I'm so fucking happy to know you and like it's crazy to see what our relationship is now versus like what it started out as and you're like literally just from like an airbnb booking you okay. know it's amazing how life works but it's it's been really cool to, to watch you go and even just like with this new thing that you just started like all these different things that you have your hand in and like the energy that you bring to it, it's just really inspiring man man that, that really means inspiring a lot, man. it's yeah. i'm so glad and it also shows me i am not an entrepreneur <laughs> <laughs> like, we actually talked about that too yeah. but man honestly like you having you here and i'm so glad you got to experience i feel yeah. like we did so many little things mm. along the way like where we both got to learn mm -hmm. and i learned so much things off you and like mm. your organ patents organization <laughs> skills is next level literally the first day he came in he's like what is all this camera shit mm. like we're gonna organize everything yeah. bro you took the company's organization game to like a whole new level okay. so i really appreciate it mm. and honestly i'm just so glad that you got to experience our way of life yeah. and and I'm glad you got to see my day to day yeah. and and how I work and how I communicate yeah. and stuff like that. And uh, honestly, you just mean the biggest help. Mm. So I was up. just I was thinking literally yesterday like about how all of the the time we catch up over FaceTime when I'm back in the states and I'm just like the fact that you even show up to that at all is like crazy <laughs> because now I'll never forget like how important it is when I get that time with you on on FaceTime that like considering your schedule you still make time for that because I never knew. I never knew. Every time we'd get on, I'd just be like, oh, I'm busy too. You know, like, <laughs> but you, you're a different level, dude. <laughs> you're a different, way different level of busy. That's so good. That's, oh, we, I wanted to also talk about, because you spent a bit of time in Canberra. How is that, mm -hmm. bro? <laughs> I mean, Canberra is one. I mean, Australia in general is, is what to talk about, not Canberra. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we're, we're lucky enough to shoot a wedding but yeah where we were staying at was i mean that was another blessing in disguise like just didn't expect that at all you know and that was that was super awesome but i mean canberra as a whole is <laughs> it's a whole different story yeah. it's really in the wild and yeah. can you tell us about the uh, uh snake attack story <laughs> so we can hype that up <laughs> i don't know about attack but <laughs> encounter maybe yeah well i mean to me snakes don't snakes don't really bother me i mean i got one on my leg i mean i, I respect them like I, yep. I definitely don't want to get bit by a snake but um obviously there was like so much hype around snakes because you're so deathly afraid of them and so the whole time i'm like hiking now because of you i'm like yeah. got a different level of awareness <laughs> <laughs> and, and so first day uh we just went from canberra and we were shooting a wedding and uh we leave that and from there i went to melbourne mm. and i was there for two days with my brother and then he flew home. And after there, I went to Tasmania and I was on my own in Tasmania. And so first day in Tasmania, I get into Hobart and I, I'm there at like 11 AM. So I can't check into my Airbnb yet. So I'm just trying to find ways to kill time. And I had like three hours. And so I'm like, okay, I'm going to go for a little trail run. And so I go up to this, this trail run at, um, Myrtle Gully or something like that. Mm. And it was super easy. You know, it was only like a thousand feet, like a couple miles. And so I'm running around the track. And I'm coming down the fire road and I'm just like, so in the zone, like running and all of a sudden, and I had like, I, don't, I can't remember if I had one or two headphones in, but I had headphones in. And so I I'm running and through my headphones, all of a sudden I like take a step and this was all like, you know, a half second mm -hmm. and I hear a, and I look down in my foot, like as soon as I hear that and this like three foot long tiger snake is like actively getting out of my way because i almost just like stepped on it like it six inches away from it and it like slithers off and i like audibly was like oh fuck and i like jump out of the way and it all it all happened so fast but i was just like i literally almost just stepped on it like can that's just, how it gets it you get attacked can i just add something yeah so like literally three days before 
Payton was like to me. Oh, you guys are just hyping these. <laughs> I've seen bigger snakes in Colorado, man, up at my shed, up on the mountains. <laughs> literally the whole three days before, he's like, man, we, I can't believe I haven't even seen a snake. And literally three days later, yeah. we see this. I yeah. hear this story. I just get a text, bro. I almost got bit of my snake. That's <laughs> crack up. It hissed at me. Like, I didn't even know snakes hissed. Yeah, they do. Yeah, I didn't even know that. Like, it literally, it was like pissed at me. Oh, but man. somehow it didn't, it didn't chase after me. I don't know. It was, it was scared enough to run away, but. It smelt your American blood. Bro. yeah i guess I like, so I'm not, I'm not messing around with this uh that's good I, after all the hikes after that i was i was a little bit paranoid but yeah it was good that's yeah. good I man survived. that's awesome i survived it i honestly like because a lot of um creative entrepreneurs artists um business owners listen to the session before you fully lose everybody in the mm-hmm. session <laughs> um i want to really dive into a certain conversation mm-hmm. we had in the last sort of two months which i, I if you've been if you're already been listening to us so far and this is the real magic stuff i really wanted to really talk in this be all session mm-hmm. and um this whole concept I, I remember it was me you and johnny having lunch mm-hmm. um at a kebab shop in, mm-hmm. in canberra and we started talking about life and and we started talking about um spirit spirit and mind body mm-hmm. soul and literally everything in the way of life and the and the rule books yeah. that have been created in yeah. life and and the way of life and, and we also started talking about why people lack the courage to make a certain move yeah. and why people are uh, uh, have such a massive impact in their trauma and their experiences and the actions they take based on their life experiences they've yep. had and this conversation was very unique mm. and i think um if uh if we can have that conversation in more communities yeah and more circles i feel like um the world generally will be a better place yeah um because it was a it was a certain type of thinking that we put in that table whereas johnny's from uh, a chinese background yeah you're an american background and i'm like fiji and indian you mm-hmm. know and I'm from the islands yeah uh, a very village approach yeah um so i think all three of us have a very different right. mind and but it I re- all clicked yeah but it yeah. all clicked in that moment and it, it kind of showed me that we're all yeah the same yeah and and even though we were brought up in different environments and we work with different kind of individuals and mm. our organizations and our businesses mm. um i think it was such a great conversation yeah so if we can kind of um really un i don't like that word unpacked because it's over fucking used yeah. but if we can really explore yeah, yeah. i really like that word yeah. explore that conversation mm. and and really understand your the mm. messaging you were trying to really get across i think mm. it'll be cool man yeah yeah about the agreements right yeah yeah I mean, I, I think one of the reasons that it went the way that it did and why it was so passionate is because it's been, it's, it's, it's a concept that if you're like a deep thinker at all, it really clicks really easily, kind of like you were talking about, regardless of your background. But moreover, it's been a, a thing that has really, it, along my own healing journey and kind of like moving forward through my life after some of the things that, have, that I've walked through, it's been one of the tools that has really has really given it all like a proper perspective for me and it can it really kind of came into my my awareness um like a, a little bit over a year ago when i was in mexico um with my sister and my brother-in-law and we were getting ready to go back to the u.s after i w- had been on like a three three month south american trip and um it, we we met this guy down there who who made music I, that's the guy that i, sh- I showed you the song and before that point, I had already read the book, The Four Agreements, right? And the, this book, by the way, like you still have to read it. Everyone yeah. should read it. It's an amazing book. Um, but in that book, it basically is is outlining these four different agreements. And I won't spoil it. People, people should just read it. But four different agreements that um, we should adopt, right? But then there's a whole other concept in the book about all of these different quote-unquote agreements that have just kind of been there waiting for us, right? And that's that's the the framing that has really helped me understand moving forward as like i start to dissect and look at all these different components of myself that are are not helping me grow they're they're kind of like hindering me from moving forward instead of just looking those at those as behaviors and and things that i don't like about the way that i act if you take a step back and you look at okay why why does the society that i live in encourage me to either act or not act in this way, right? Like what things have already been there that society has already set up the bounds of and said, this is good, this is bad, this is in the middle that I have just accepted because I was just born into that society, right? And so 
we started to look at some of those and just in our conversation, like religion's a big one. Um, but you even get more down to the fundamental, like the really fundamental things about being a human. And you start thinking about like your language, your name, like the family, like all of these things were just get given to you. You didn't get a choice in them. Right. And then from this, this, uh, this point that you've arrived at when you're born, you start to move forward. But that point is different for everybody. And we accept or deny certain things as we move through life accordingly. And I just think it's such a fascinating conversation to take a step back and look at those things because everyone's at a different one. Everyone's at a different point and everyone's got different agreements that they've either made or haven't made. And they see the world through that lens. And so if you're constantly walking around, just thinking that like the agreements that you've made are the like right ones or the ones that are, are true, you're never going to understand somebody else's agreements. Right. And it's going to completely block you. But if you take that step back and you start to look at everything as like, oh, the way that I think about this or the way that I am in this situation is just some, an agreement that I've made. It's just a way that I've, I've decided is right. And I've moved forward according to that then you start to understand how like anyone that isn't in that same space is just doing the same thing from a, from a different perspective. Does that make sense? That does. I don't know. It's a really hard conversation to kind of like synthesize. It kind of requires that spontaneity, like in that, that moment to, to really click. But I think a lot of people will resonate with that idea of like that they may have certain agreements, right. And that there isn't necessarily this like objective truth to the world. It's just, the agreements that we've made or haven't made. So can you just dissect the the definition of agreement? Is it, are you talking more va- uh, yeah. belief based? Yeah. Or, or I think, I think the definition is really broad actually. Yeah. Um, I think it can be belief based, but I, I think in general, if I were to just give like an off the cuff definition of what an agreement is, it's just something that in our minds we've decided is true. That's, I think that's all it is, yeah. right? If, if we, or that somebody else has decided is true for us. I think it's those two things. Either we or someone else has decided something is true and we are living out of that reality. Yep. I want to just go three dimension on this and just mm-hmm. talk about the listeners. So if you've been listening to this, I want you right now to really think about the agreements and that you've yeah. made in your life and what have you got on your top shelf yeah. that's making you move a certain way. Yeah. And I was talking about this with somebody a couple of days ago and I really, because when we're having that conversation between me and you and Johnny, mm-hmm. like the trust in that conversation was unbelievable unreal mm-hmm. and we were very open mm-hmm. with how we lived our lives and the experience we had and mm-hmm. the impact and obviously because we're such close friends we we understand each other mm-hmm. and just the way you were like there was a lot of challenging narratives yeah you know and and the way you answered them mm. with understanding before mm. you went in with your point of view mm-hmm. and same for johnny and and me and mm-hmm. it, it was such an amazing dialect mm-hmm. so if you are in a position in your life right now where you are trying to change people or mm-hmm. you're trying to make difference in a certain movement in a certain business in a in an organization i think it's really important to understand that people are on different pages mm. and, and and they've gone through different experiences. They and, have different agreements yeah. to just keep it consistent. Exactly. And yeah. a lot of times when I believe that when there's a lot of conflict in the world, it's because people think that their agreement is better than the right. other person's. Yes. And I think when we understand that that's not the case. Yeah. Well, it's not, it's not even, it's not like, we don't even have to frame it as like a intentional thing. Yeah. Like it's not even necessarily that people are deliberately trying to, I mean, I, some people certainly are, but it's not even that people are deliberately trying to like put their agreement on top of your agreement. It's just subconsciously an agreement that they've made. So they just see the world like that. They can't help it's it. It's the subconscious biases. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They don't, they don't, they don't know better. And so when you start to like really put into perspective that our, agreements, ideas, perspective, whatever you want to call it are just that they're not these like necessarily inherent things just floating out in the world. It's like, it's just an idea. It's Mm. just an agreement. We've Mm. just decided to adopt it. Mm. We're the ones who have just decided to marry ourselves to it and say, this is now a part of me. You know what I mean? Yeah. That doesn't actually like, and it's a very human thing that that happens because humans, because of our ego are constantly trying to figure out which identities are best in line with us. We're, we're constantly looking outwards into the world and trying to figure out what components reflect us. Mm. When in reality, 
that we're never going to find that in the world that only comes from ourselves. Right. Yeah. But our ego, which is made to survive in the world, that's made to, to keep us safe is always looking outwardly to try to find things that, that represent our identity. When in reality, it, you can't, you know, that's so true. But, but if you've, if you've stacked up all these different layers of agreements into your identity, then it's going to be really hard for someone to come along with a difference and, and convince you that they're right, you know. And if we dissect this word identity back mm-hmm. like 20, 20, 30 years ago mm-hmm. when media was on, on certain bo- billboards, TV shows, was just one way of streaming, mm-hmm. you know, how the world's ch- changing so fast now. Information is moving so quickly. Yep. Like people are starting to build identities with individuals, with right. with with certain people, with right. certain groups a lot faster. Mm. And I feel like it's quite unique to see ideologies forming mm. and narratives forming differently. Mm. And I'm not saying it's a bad thing or yeah, a good right. thing, you know, right. but I think it's awareness of yep. really understanding, you know, don't get attached to yes. things. Yes, it, it, there's nothing wrong with believing in ideas. Yeah there's the only danger comes when you look at an idea and you think that it's a part of yourself because then if somebody comes in with an opposing idea you feel like they're opposing you when it's not the case you just have taken this thing that should never have been a part of you and you've made it a part of you and now if somebody challenges it they're challenging you and this is a unique conversation because i remember by the end of that conversation we're driving it was nighttime Mm -hmm. and we started driving and there was one point was like we started talking about oh like you know i get attached to identity so much and i also let go of identity so much but i've got such a subconscious bias say towards yeah. south auckland because it's where i was raised and born and mm. i i always try fight for if somebody tries to put us down mm. you know and and then there's also like identities um but it's also a, a positive and a barrier because sometimes i feel like i'm the victim yeah you know yeah so like see those mirrors right and so many people that listen to this podcast must genuinely feel the same because or you wouldn't be listening to be all sessions yeah, absolutely. you know what i mean yeah. so i think there's a lot of relatability mm-hmm. in this and i'm not at all am i saying in this conversation it's a good or bad thing but i want you to realize that it could also be stopping you from growing yeah because totally. i remember like doing a big shift in branding and 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 trying to figure out like how i can grow my thinking and obviously i was in a certain environment having certain conversations and the ideas were still the same Mm. and it was not until me leaving a community group or organization where i start to get other people's thinking Mm. and their way of life and i because i was so stuck in my identity that i could never really grow exactly you know and and i encourage you it's a little bit uncomfortable you might you might get a bit of hate for it you know but I think it's realizing that in order for us to really go to the next stage, we have to let go of our old identities. Or we don't yeah. even have to let go. We have to build on it. You just have to have it in the proper perspective, right? Like, yeah. I mean, as someone who has faith, I, I, I have a little bit of a different conversation or perspective on this. Because to me, there is one identity that I'll never actually let go of. And that's my faith, right? So I can't, I can't sit here and say that like, I'm identity less because I do have an identity that I hold on to, but I just believe that it's worth holding on to because it transcends anything that will be found in the world. Right. Mm. But if you don't have something that's that concrete to point out your identity, that's never going to change. That's never going to fade. That's never going to fail. Then you're constantly going to be at the mercy of whatever you've placed your identity in. If you find some, if you look around and you find something in the world to look at and say that's who I am, mm. it's it, you. You are only as good as that thing is, and you are only as rigid as that thing is, and you're only as true as that thing is. So it's like, make sure you choose a good one. You know, make sure it's not a, it's not something stupid like an ideology yeah. or a political system or whatever that is constantly changing and never going to actually be you know worthy so 100 percent. and i'm gonna just uh, recap that for the listeners so are you kind of meaning that there is a spiritual identity and belief and there's materialistic identities is that is that kind of i think an ident i think you can put your identity in anything right like yeah i think there's a million different categories for it um but i think that they all the only thing that they have in common again for me the only exception being religion, because I believe that that I believe that that's the only identity that is actually transcends anything in the world. But that's, you know, people will disagree with that, obviously. But 
I, I think that any any identity that will be found in the world is fleeting. Mm. I just I don't think there's anything you can look at in the world. There needs to be some sort of like um belief system that you need to create in yeah. your in your own heart. Yeah. Yeah, and, and yeah, in inwardly, yeah. not outwardly. Yeah. You're not you're not looking out to see who you are in the yeah, world. Yeah, if you seek energy in external sources that's not within you, Correct. Uh, it's not going to withstand the distance. That's it. Yes. You, like you know they say that like a person that's got enough belief in themselves and belief in 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 inner energy. Yeah. It's going to transcend. Right. You know, right. anything. Right. Yeah, because because to me, I, I put my identity in God, but it's not, that's not actually external. That's inward. Like God lives in me. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So I'm still putting my focus inward. And if you don't have that faith system, that's okay. But just don't don't look outwardly for it. Find it in, you know, find it in yourself because that's going to last. Yeah. Your, your uniqueness, your individuality is going to last when the world is not. Yeah, hundred percent. And and I remember like when I was a lot younger, going through that sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, twenty phase, it was mm -hmm. like so much idealization. Yeah. And I guess everyone goes through it, right? Yeah. But as you get older, you start realizing that like there's no difference between in, like human to human. Yeah. Like if if you admire somebody really deeply, at some point they were also like shit at yeah. something yeah and that's why i always talk about in these sessions that like whoever you look up to and whoever inspires you on the daily like it's okay to seek inspiration because because that's what humans do yeah because if people didn't start something they would not even believe it mm. and i think there's there's strength in in human to human energy as well yes but i think it's realizing that if that person can do it 100 percent, you can do it right and it, it doesn't matter that that person's done it better or you can do it even better. It's right. meaning that you seek learning. Yes. And every, I, everyone's a mirror. Every, yeah. every single other human being is a mirror. And what I mean by that is that when, when and this was actually a, a part of the conversation that we were, we were having that I think gives a lot of context, it's context. And that's the idea that everyone's a mirror. People, the reality is, and this is uncomfortable for a lot of people, but it's, it's true when you really like think about it. People are selfish. No, no one is really 100% focused on other people. They, you can't. You can't survive in the world unless you're first and foremost focusing on yourself, right? So when you accept that as truth, again, it doesn't mean you're a bad person. It just means you're taking care of your own self first, okay? All of your energy is first going to you and then outward. So when we accept that as true, then we understand that every interaction, every person is some sort of reflection on us. When we look at other people, there's this awesome quote that I think about all the time from Carl Jung, and it says that everything that frustrates us about somebody else can lead to a better understanding of ourselves. I couldn't, I could not believe in that more. Like when you look at somebody and they just do something that just like pisses you off, but the person next to you has like no problem with it. Like that's a good indication that what you're actually seeing in that person is something about you that pisses you off but you're not, you're not connecting the dots. You're just thinking that they're annoying you. But in reality, you're seeing a quality of yourself that you reject and it's, it's upsetting you. And you see that in them. Same is true for the positive qualities. When you look, have somebody that you look at and you just really admire, like they have these attributes that you're just like aspiring to, it's because you know you also have that and you also value those things and you see them in them, but you know that you also are capable of that. Yeah. And I think that's a really important thing to see is that every single person is a mirror for ourselves. It's not that there's these individuals just like running around the world that have this or don't have this. It's like everything we already need is in us to a certain degree. And you are every interaction you have with a person, you're seeing different levels of that, of your own self in them. Yeah. You know, does that make sense? Yeah. And I, I remember, realized we, we started talking about envy, jealousy, and like yeah. you th we think it's these types of feelings. Right. But if we really understand these words, right. it's like realizing our potential. Yes. And, and deep down, when we feel like that, we start to realize, oh shit, deep down, I can actually do this. Right. But I'm just like neglecting it and right. trying to bring, oh, why the fuck is this guy yes. doing this? Yes. Like, you know? Yeah. yeah. And like, let's just stick with that yeah. one because that's a really, I think, relatable one. Yeah. Envy, right? Like, everyone's felt envy at some point of their lives, but it's a completely useless, it's a completely useless waste of your energy because what really is behind envy is a belief in yourself. And you're, when you're feeling envy, it's not that you actually, it's not that you actually are like 
upset at somebody else for having more than you. It's that you're upset at yourself because you know you can get to that level and you're not. So somebody, you look at somebody else who's done what you know you're capable of and you're pissed off at yourself that you haven't done it, but it comes out as anger towards someone else. You know what I mean? So that's a perfect really example. example. And that, that's why that emotion is so pointless because what you could actually do when you feel envy is you could, be, you could realize what's going on underneath it, which again is that you see in yourself that same potential and you could use it as inspiration to start working to that instead of instead of the roadblock that is envy it's not going to lead anywhere it's literally just a dead emotion like that doesn't do anything what could do something is the inspiration that's behind it to actually like start walking towards that path that you're admiring in that person you yeah. know yeah i think this is a that was a really good example yeah envy envy is a hard one for me i used to be a very envious person like yeah. I used to look at, I, I still, I still, like, I'm so good about catching it now that when it comes up, I'm like, ah, you motherfucker, get out <laughs> of here. Like, get out of here. Everyone goes through it, bro. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. at different points in my life, different different mental states, I still, I still deal with envy quite a bit because I know inherently um, I, I tend to take the path of least resistance. And yeah. I'm very good at, at forcing myself to do it. Yeah. To, to not and to take the harder path because it's good for me but innately i want to take the easy path in life mm. and i don't and when i take the easy path too often it leads to envy because deep down i know i could be doing better 100 you know? and and i i feel like there's a another side of this conversation where a lot of times uh people confuse uh confidence with um like being arrogant yeah all the time and 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 like say for example let's just talk about this like when somebody is going after something yeah or when somebody is like genuinely like trying to make their lives better mm. and 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 we live in a world where we can't humans can't tell the difference if, if this is genuine confidence or is this guy just being a dick mm. or arrogant mm. you know and and sometimes we miss misunderstand these narratives yeah and that's and it's it sucks because Someone could genuinely be trying to make a positive difference, but somebody could react to it. Yeah. And just like, literally that guy could stop trying. Right. And there goes an idea, go, there goes a dream before the age of 25 in the graveyard. Yeah. Because some, the world brought them right. down. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and one of the greatest reasons why I do what I do and every single week I keep showing up is, is, is to show people that despite the negativity, despite disbelief, you know, despite um, a lack of audience or lack of views or lack of understanding of who i am mm. it's okay to show up for what you love for mm. even when no one is mm. paying attention it's necessary yeah. yeah and a lot of times we live in a world where we seek attention yeah but maybe the only attention we ever need is ourselves yeah, yeah. absolutely I, I couldn't agree with that more like i think that's been the biggest shift in in my not only my path but also my quality of work is when i truly started just making stuff for myself instead of trying to make it for other people. That's the reason like still to this day, I can't, I can't really do client work anymore because it's like this, I, I'm trying, I'm having to put myself into your, your world and create out of that space. And that's just not where I live. I live in my world. I live in my, my space. So yeah, I, I think the more that you could get on track with, with that, like doing things, acting the, like out of your truest self and what you care about in the world the better everyone's going to be and, and it attracts that energy yeah, man and it it's does. weird like every time i've tried to be somebody else or i've tried to up, like put a persona on it's just it never gets me on the right path right and completely honest like in the session it's it's more the fact when i'm like just the real nice like mm. you know like who i who who i who i am as an artist right and and it's weird how life works and it's mm. weird how attraction works it's weird mm -hmm. how it moves away from a uh, promotion to you know attraction and yeah. it, like it just it moves away from like the sense of um you yeah and and it's 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 you know people there's not enough of that in this, in this world yeah and and a lot of times um we're always going after outcomes yeah and not saying i haven't been in a position where i've i've actually been doing that mm -hmm. it's more the fact is trying to create better awareness yeah yeah and whatever you focus on and that's I, where you're gonna go and i think the biggest awareness has actually just been in the last few months where like losing my dog mm. and like going through grief mm. is like grief teaches you the realities mm. man mm. isn't it crazy like what what's the biggest reality i think the reality of understanding pain mm. 
and and the realities of like true priorities and true mm. time and how we should spend our time. And I thought I, was, I, I had it under control. Yeah. Like the whole world was like, nice, you got it under control. Mm. Like all my mates, all my communities, like you seem like you have it all under control, bro. Mm. But really like when, when I get hit with that, like it's weird when somebody has this much energy, mm. there's also a, this yeah. down energy. Yeah. And there's also a, a state of mind where the creativity, I can be the, I feel like I can have the greatest creativity, but there's also a, a, a very bad side to that. Yeah, totally. And 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 it's like you're always, you could be so positive, you could try make the world a better place, you could try be a good person, but then on the other side, it's like you're there's a bad wolf. It's it's exactly the bad wolf. It and it's the the classic saying of like which one's gonna win, whichever one you feed, right? Yeah. Like both of those are always going to exist both of those wolves are always going to be in your life you know yes. the, the 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 oh shit man maybe i'll take the easy way yeah out. the oh, dopamine the dopamine uh, the addiction you know that the, the, uh, no discipline yes don't 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 do don't go for a fucking run today nice yes. or yes. go do this yes you know? and which one are you gonna feed <laughs> yeah, you bro, that's it mm. that's it and yeah. i think there's a there's a big conversation in this where this could be for three hours to be honest <laughs> where a lot of people go through this mm. And they they kind of like I, and I've done this too. Like I'm not saying I haven't done it. It's like this way of life of like ah I have tomorrow. Yeah. Oh I'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. Oh maybe I'll mend that relationship a little mm. bit later. Or maybe oh, that person's really been a dick to me my whole life. Mm. I fucking hate that person. Mm. Or we don't really talk to our brothers and sisters that much. Or yeah. We don't call our grandma. Or like we think like you know like yeah. these type of little things and these relationships. We think it's like gonna be around forever and we yeah. keep that mentality. And I think there's something there, man. That's why I love weed. I don't know if I can say that. Right here, but it always, New Zealand needs to legalize it, bro. It, That's it, an, oh my God, we should talk about that. It always puts it into that exact same and, thing into perspective for me. You know, people always talk about like the anxiety and, and such that comes with it. And for me, it's just, I think getting scared is good. Mm. I, a little bit of getting scared every once in a while. And what mm. I mean by that is like that reality that you just said, like my grandma's going to die one day. My parents aren't going to be around forever. I'm not going to be around forever. All these realities that are like kind of scary to think about and kind of cause some anxiety. We need to look at those things and we need to, we need to look at that wolf. We don't need to feed that wolf, but we need to see that wolf over there and be a little f scared of it so that we act accordingly. And so that we feed the good wolf more. You know what I mean? If, if we're always just pretending that like these bad things aren't there, these scary things aren't there. They have, they still have power. You're not taking power away from them. They're just doing it in the dark because you're not willing to look at them, you know? And that's why I love weed because <laughs> it always gets me scared. Yeah, yeah. Uh, not always, but it, it does. It gets me scared every once in a while. And it, I feel like I genuinely take less for granted that's because true. of it. That's true. Know? I think, um, actually, can we talk about this? Sure. I really want to get this yeah. off, off, off my chest. Can we, because I, I know the, like, you know, weed is legal mm -hmm. where you're from and weed's not legal in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, drugs in general mm -hmm. and and uh, the addiction is a thing and you know it's, it's these 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 issues around information and 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 money i mean drug laundering yeah. and all that shit like you know can we talk about what we were talking about only a couple of days ago mm -hmm. i think and uh, legalization and mm -hmm. stuff like that i know we're sort of skipping topics here but i think this is super important mm -hmm. to get off my get get on the session yeah um What's your thinking and your point of view to solving some of those problems in this world of and, addiction? And of it, not only addiction, mm -hmm. but also substance mm -hmm. and understanding um, uh, how 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 we educate people. Yeah, I really want to talk about the education mm -hmm. piece. Yeah, yeah. So people can make choices. Right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, totally. And I think there was something you said to me a couple of days ago, which I really resonated with which hopefully you can articulate mm -hmm. um, around the education of drugs. Mm -hmm. I mean, th so I think, first of all, I got to like kind of set the foundation of how I, I think about this, which is how I think about a lot of things. And that just comes from like autonomy. Like I'm a big believer in like autonomy that the, the best society is a society where people have m the most freedom to govern their own decisions. Right. Um, so that's, that's kind of where I start out with everything. And then on top of that belief, I pile in, reason right like I, I i'm practical like I, tr I try to always be like okay with that there what's the mo what's the like smartest decision to make what's the best decision to make and usually the filter that i do that through is education so with those two things kind of being established i my view on the whole the whole matter has always just been 
the more education, the better. And I live in Colorado, which is a pretty like progressive state in this regard. Like we, they just decriminalized um, plant medicine like last ballot measure. So anyone in Colorado can legally grow and distribute like mushrooms, LSD, um, DMT, like all these different things, right? And like we're the only state other than Oregon who's done that out of 50 states. So it's not a very popular thing. And I, I believe in that because again, what I just said, like not necessarily because I want to, I I think everyone should do those substances or that I think that, you know, everyone should have access, but because of the autonomy piece, because I, I just really believe that humans should have the right and the freedom to make like their own decisions and not like live in this world where all these agreements have been made for them already. Right. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'm not a politician, so I, I don't necessarily have like a lot of solutions, but I think in places like Portugal where they've decriminalized all drugs, um, you've seen a really sharp decline in overdose deaths, um, in all of these different drug related incidences. And I just think overall that it would be a pretty good step for society to move in. And like I said, I've, I mean, I've lived in Colorado my whole life. We've been, we were the first state to Mm. legalize marijuana, arguably the first place in the entire world to legalize marijuana. Mm. Um, and it's only been a net, a net benefit. Like even, even the people who were against it can't really deny that. Like it's generated so much tax revenue, Mm. but again, put all that aside the education has just been able to take off. Like, because there's not this war on this substance and there's not these people just sitting there telling you what you can and can't do. And and who's controlling the money? Right, yeah, because it's become legalized, now institutions can actually study how to use it safely, what dosages are safe, um, what people with certain psychiatric conditions shouldn't use it. All of these things that were just completely inaccessible when it's like, when it's illegal, right? Yeah. So now because of that, we have such a sanctioned body governing this substance that it's so safe now. And it, and you know exactly what you're getting and you're not having to like mix shit. You're not, yeah, you're not having to, especially because we were talking about the fentanyl, the and, fentanyl. And, problem, and straight right? away when you told me the amount that could kill you, yes. I was like, fuck, I'm never touching that yes. shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, no one, no one really t- tries to touch fentanyl. It's just cut in everything. But that and, and again, we, weed is weed isn't laced with anything. You know, you you hear that every once in a while, but no one's lacing anything in weed. It, it, it's a waste of money. That weed is so cheap, you would never lace it. But it, say say you were talking about something like cocaine, right? Like cocaine's a ubiquitous drug in the U.S. So many people do cocaine, and because it's illegal the only way that people are going to get access to cocaine is if they're buying it illegally. So that means it's coming from the cartel. It's coming from Mexico. It's being cut, made in God knows where with God knows what you have no way of actually knowing what's in that. And as a result, hundreds of thousands of people are dying from fentanyl overdoses. Mm. And that's not happening with things like weed. That's not happening with things that are legal and sanctioned and studied and understood, you know? That's so true. So that's just my opinion. Education. And again, I don't. I don't think. Pe- I don't think everyone should do cocaine. I don't think really like. Uh, I don't think people should do drugs. Like j- just because I think that they're legal doesn't mean that I think people should should necessarily partake. But they should have the choice, and it has to be understood. It has to be. People have to be have to have access to education. Also, you know? I want to add to this. Yeah. You know how you said people should have a choice. Yeah. And I, I completely agree. And I also believe there is a there's a there's a sub, subconscious narrative that's been passed on from generation to generation, especially mm. with kids, around like this whole belief, oh, I, I wanna be a rule breaker. Mm. So when we create these rules, yeah. kids feel like, Oh yo, if I try this, yeah. like yo, I'm gonna be cool. Like, totally. You know, I'm gonna be the cool kid in school and totally. like if I bring this and like, you know, smoke this or like do that, you know, like these are like a this like like this thing starts to cause. Yeah. And um this like these ide- ideologies and stuff like that. And I think when we give the freedom of choice, mm. it's 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 our self education and our education by our communities. Yes. Like having conversations like this, right. openly about it. Right. Our uh, conversations with our parents, our yep. conversations with our siblings, our conversations with our partners. Yep. You know, and the things that we value and how how it can make such a larger scale impact yeah. in, in the whole world. Yeah. The fur the fur I uh, like understand what you're saying so wholly and the first time i ever really understood that was 
when I was 18, I went to Europe for, uh, that was like my first big international trip. We've talked about it on this podcast before. Um, but one of the biggest things that I noticed, because I, I, like I said, I went there when I was 18, so I couldn't drink in the U S but I could drink in Europe because drinking is, is 18. And I remember having my first drink in Europe and the first night my Airbnb or my couch surfing host took me out and he got me like this bottle of wine. And I remember I had just come from the U S where I had just gone through high school and I was drinking all the time and abusing alcohol to the max, like partying all the time, always wanted to be drunk, always wanted to see how drunk I could get. And I got to Europe and I went out to the restaurant and for the first time in my life, I had legal alcohol and it completely changed my perspective because I realized that I didn't really actually care about it. it. I was only trying to abuse alcohol in the U S because it was so forbidden. Like it was this thing that in the most experimental part of my life, I couldn't have access to. So it only made me want it more. And then the moment I actually got it legally, I didn't even care. I even started to not like me, it. Bro. <laughs> yeah. Like, and still to this day, like I don't drink anymore. I, I've, I, I don't like alcohol anymore, but yeah. that was like the beginning of me. Um, and that was like the first kind of movement towards getting away from it was the fact that I actually didn't have to chase it just for the act of chasing it anymore. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I, I do, I genuinely think that that's one thing that the U S suffers a lot of alcohol abuse from is these really strict alcohol laws because mm. we can't have access to it in the U S until we're 21. Mm. And as a result, I think that it's doing, it's doing more harm than good, you know, because it's like, I'm at all of the, my friends in Europe, and I'm sure you're the same way because you have the same drinking age. They've been drinking, in moderation and responsibly since they were like 14, 15, you know, you have like a little bit of wine at dinner, you're, you have like one beer. And as a result, you learn how to, how to, um, responsibly handle alcohol from a young age. And then by the time you get to the point where you can actually drink, it's like, it's just something that you understand. Yeah. You don't all, you're not always like in this battle with like, oh, I can't have it, but I really want it. You yeah. Know? Yeah. I think with America, yeah, you're right. Cause you guys are like 21. Then. And they just did the same thing with tobacco. So mm -hmm. now it's like, you can't even buy tobacco until you're and, 21. And, and that 18 to 21 phase is like crucial. That's like, that's like, when else are you trying to get those things the most? You know, yeah. you're not a 40 year old who's like fiending for like nicotine. <laughs> I mean, okay. I take that back. There definitely are, yeah. but you get what I mean. I it's get like what you mean. When it, you want those things the most, it's when you're young and when it's, you're trying to experiment and it's when you can't have them. Yeah. hundred percent. And obviously like New Zealand's still as bad as probably everyone else and like been drinking and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So yeah, like it's, I think it's all over the world, but it's really understanding and educating and right. really just having that space. And then just on this, like while we're we're still on this conversation of like the fact that alcohol is so ubiquitous and it's so accepted in everyone. I mean, think of how much alcohol is truly in our society. Yeah. You can't go to an event. You can't go to a wedding. You can't go to anything that doesn't have alcohol. Yeah. And that you can't have a gathering in your garage without alcohol. And like, that kills more people yeah. every year than almost anything. Cause they've attached the social aspect. Right. They think that you can't hang out, have fun without right without alcohol right and and new zealand's real bad at that and yet it's one of the deadliest drugs yeah 100%. like don't don't be confused like that is a drug yeah and it is one of the deadliest drug it actually i think it is the i think it kills more people every year than cigarettes at this point yeah. and yet it's completely okay it's completely okay but yet i you can't go in most of the world and smoke weed yeah. who's never literally never killed anyone weed has never killed anyone but alcohol is fine yeah. Alcohol kills hundreds of thousands of people a year and it's completely fine. Yeah. It's like our perspective is just, these are just agreements that we've made. Yeah. We've made an agreement in most of our society and it was there before we were born and we were born into it and we said, okay, yeah, I agree with that, that these drugs are bad and these drugs are good. And it doesn't forget about how many they kill. No, no, don't focus on that. <laughs> these are bad. These are good. This is what we tell you. And we say, okay. Yeah. And if you, you know, as time goes on, we just live in those agreements and it's harder and harder to break away from them because we've just agreed with them our entire lives. But the reality is it's just, that's just an agreement we made, Damn. you know, and the more that we can just educate ourselves and just be like, no one wants to be addicted to like hard drugs. No one, like these are a result of this system that we've built. These are a result of like demonizing these things that these people get into these bad habits because of the system that's in place. It has nothing to do with like the actual drug in my opinion, but anyway, that's I love a whole it. conversation. I love how yeah. you articulate that. Cause uh, for, the, for the listeners, for the, we're definitely going to cut that into yeah. a snippet and it's great real <laughs> <laughs> drugs. I'm just like the poster boy of drugs. <laughs> no, I love it, man. We talked about New Zealand, 
talked about your experiences. We talked about agreements. We've yeah. talked about um, pretty much everything around confidence and ideologies and now alcohol. Yeah. Um, we've got a couple more minutes left on the session, man. We got to talk about tall poppies. Oh, still. yeah. Yeah. We still have to talk about that. Because that is a fascinating dynamic. And I think you actually know the most about this. I'd like mm. to like, I mean, we've talked about it, but just for the listeners, like I want to know one of, the, one of the biggest things that I really didn't know about you um, until I came here, until I actually like experienced it was that how much you suffer from like that, that weight being placed on you. Like in America, we, we so celebrate success. We so celebrate like as, aspiring to things. It's so ingrained in my DNA from living and growing up in America that like, if you have a dream, you chase it. And I'm not saying that everyone in America always like 100% supports that. Like I've, I've had family, I've had friends that have kind of like, you know, looked at me as like, I'm a little crazy for trying to do some of the things that I do, but deep down the society as a whole rewards that. And coming here, one of the things that I was most shocked to, to understand was like how much that's not necessarily the case for you. And actually how a lot of the times, like you've had friends and you've had family that have really like been discouraging of like you and your dreams. And I, that was just a real big shock to me. And I'd love to hear like what you think about that. And, and I mean, just like tell the the people at home because I did not expect that. Yeah. I think, I think, you know, how the whole idea of the American dream yeah. and like uh, the culture aspect that we get to see from your point of view to us is completely different. Mm. And I think uh, we don't actually have that mindset of like the New Zealand dream or like mm. someone trying to be an entrepreneur or a business owner or trying to do something a little bit different from cultural norms or societal norms or, you know, there's a, there's a lot of, there's a lot of negativity mm. um, around like, it goes back to like that stuff we talked about, you know, like our subconscious agreements. Yeah. Like it goes back to, oh fuck, oh, this guy's just showing off. Or yeah. this guy's just doing something that, uh, like, you know, there's always like a negative backlash of somebody mm trying to do something mm. you know and and not saying all the time um it's the case uh because i've also been in rooms and conversations where it's been super positive yeah but it, it, you do feel a sense of energy mm. and and, a, and sometimes a lack of support in in circles mm. and you can start in that and 95 percent of people will go shut down and be play the victim right and, and it's, it's that five two three one percent of individuals that right. i believe that have have the courage to you know break and and really be the difference yeah and i think when you when you can be that person um in your in your own community mm. you start to see that everybody deep down wants that mm. you know and and they're just looking for a lighthouse mm. and and sometimes man it just it sucks that you have to be the guy taking yeah the that's that's kind of what i was thinking as you're saying that like how do you keep that how do you keep that energy in a society that's like constantly trying to take that away because like if if I'm a lighthouse in America, one of hundreds of thousands of lighthouses, there's no shortage of like supply, right? To to power it. To see the light. But like if you are living in a society where it's like everyone's always trying to like grab the power from you, like how do you stay? How do you stay in that space? I think it goes back to the internal belief, mm. the internal energy, mm. whether it's God, whether it's the heartbeat, mm. whether whether it's love. Mm. It's it's always focusing on the internal belief, and mm. I know it fucking sounds like like you know bullshit. Yeah. But you have to understand that you have to be able to rewrite the narrative in your own heart, mm. in your own mind. Mm. And in order to do that, is you you have to be able to see the future, be somewhat of a visionary, yeah. and believe that's the outcome. Yeah. And, and, and it's not attaching yourself to the outcome, right. but it's believing it. And your ability to get to that outcome. Exactly. Yeah. It's, your, it's your belief and your confidence that's going to get you there. Mm. And then without all of that, it's the courage. Mm. And, and it's yeah. realizing that it's never been the focus of who's clapping externally. Mm. It's always the focus of the beat inside your heart mm. because you're fucking going to die yeah. regardless. Yeah. And no one's going to give a fuck. We talked about this in a mm -hmm. hundred years. You're fucking going to hit the grave and no one give a fuck about yeah. you. But it's realizing that when, when you're in a community, and I know there's so many people that listen to this, they feel like the underdog. They feel like it's not going to turn out the way they want or people are going to just like think shit of them or yeah. like 
they're going to base their um, success on the amount of likes they get or the amount of amount of views they get and stuff like that. They they start creating these these success, false success stories, mm. and it's realizing that the only success you ever really need yeah. is is the ability to realize that you m- trying to make a difference in yourself will automatically create the domino effect. Mm. Do you hear mm. what I mean? Yeah, totally. And 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 the momentum. The momentum. And and it's 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 if you it, I've talked about it too many times if you never start like how fast we launched that thing yesterday. Mm-hmm. And and it's it's about bringing community up, you know, yeah. the great run club. Mm-hmm. It's literally we got an idea, we planned, executed in 6 hours we need to get this out, mm. you know? And 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 it's it's realizing that you, once you fail and try a lot of times, yeah. You just build the reps, yeah. And a lot of times, yeah. a lot of times, people. I don't want to kind of be changing the conversation too much, but I, a lot of times, people just aren't willing to go the distance, yeah, because they get shut down too right. much. And really, the most successful people, they just really just went the distance, right? And and they they didn't focus on too many ideologies, right? And in, in what they believed in, because it's really, it never really matters what anybody else thinks. Yeah. Even if it takes you ten years longer, based on your own learning, right? That's better than getting there in two years, right? Because I promise you, if you get there in two years, you're gonna lose it in, right. in less than that. Bringing it full circle, it yeah. especially doesn't care, matter what other people think because that's just an identity. Yeah. Like when you're putting, when you really care about what other people think that's you've taken that identity and you've made that a part of you and now if it goes against that then you can't move forward because 100%. it's like it's against the identity 100%. so it's even more to your point like the key to that is just to shed as many identities as possible other than the one that's always true always in here yeah and move forward out of that yeah you know i just yeah that was just so fascinating to me and it it gave me such a more level of respect for you because as i've listened to be a wolf back home and been a part of it and just like seen all the things that you've done it's always felt so normal to me because I just thought that that's how it was here too. I didn't realize that that wasn't, you weren't operating in the same environment, but you have a perspective and you have an outlook that's like even so far above, I think so many Americans who actually do have the freedom and actually do have the support to pursue and the their opportunities dreams. and the resources. And they're, and they're not even doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. But yet you're here and you're thriving so much and yeah. you're always staying the tall poppy amidst a field of people who are trying to cut you down. Yeah. And it, I just never, I never realized that until I was here and it yeah. gave me like a mad level of respect for you for yeah. sure. That means a lot because man. it's like, Man, I can't imagine. I don't know. I don't know if I would have had the like grit to keep going mm. and, to, and to push through that if I lived in a society other than the one that I, I do. I really don't know. Mm. But I'm grateful that I do. And I'm really happy that like you continue to grow above all that yeah. despite that. I, I'm a big believer that it's actually been such a big help for me. Um, mm. Because like sometimes the not feeling good enough or sometimes oh, like that inner um, trauma mm-hmm. is like, uh, like a driving factor mm. it's kind of like an encouragement like i, I kind of like losing mm. you know what i mean mm. it's weird to say but no, I, I know what you mean it's like it's like oh shit mm. it just means that fuck i just learned something else mm. you know and and i think um when you've got that mentality of like waking up in the morning not feeling good enough and by the end of the day you feel like you're on top of the mountain yeah every single day on repeat and you repeat that yeah. process over and over again it's, very true. it's not not very often someone can come to me and shut me down that's very true you know? i think that's a lot of the reason too why i try to do such difficult things is mm. because i live in a very easy society yeah i live in a society that's very comfortable and so i have to actually like take the initiative to do difficult things because of what you just said i do think it's beneficial it's beneficial to wake up in the mornings for me at the trailhead of a mountain that I know is going to be a full day to climb and to feel like shit already yeah. and to know that I still have so much work to do yeah. and not believe in myself and to have all this doubt and then to have that moment hours later where I'm on top of the mountain and I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, again, that's it. Again, I've done it. Again, yeah. I've proven to myself that like I can overcome what's in here initially. You yeah, know? you're just stacking the confidence. Yeah. You're stacking the skill, trying new things right. and you're building ability. And man, this is a this is... These levels to this game. Yeah. And a lot of times people feel like they can get to level 10 are not by like not even going through level one, level two. Right. And right. you've got to go through these stages. And more importantly to what you just said, which is something that I've, I've realized the past couple of years as well, is that every time a lot of people don't realize that 
Every time you get to a new level, you are now at the bottom again. You're at the bottom of that level. Everybody thinks that like when they're leveling up, they're always going higher, which they are. But when you go from level two to level three, you are now at the bottom of level level three. Yeah. You're not at the top of two anymore. Yeah. You're at the bottom of level three. And that's when your ego kicks yes. in and then you think you're like, oh, fuck, I'm, I've done yes. some things right. And like, then you, know? you have to stay humble. You have yeah. to stay in that position. But that was actually really hard for me when I came back from South America because the beginning of last year when I came back, I was depressed because I was having that reckoning where mm. I realized that before I went to South America, I was at the top of that current level that I was at. And yeah. I felt like I was on top of the world. And then I, I went to the next level, but now because I was at the next level, I was at the bottom again. And I was looking up at all of the work that I was going to have to do to progress out of that level. And it depressed the fuck out of me. And now like over a year later, I've now, you know, climbed higher up on that level again. And I feel, I feel good again, but that's a good, really good, um, awareness to have what you just said that yeah. like if you're if you're never willing to be at the bottom of a level again you're never going to keep going up in levels 100 <laughs> percent. and i feel like especially in a tall poppy environment if you can build this mindset and i try to talk about this with kids all the time that i work with um in workshops and creative workshops and stuff like that is making them understand as if you're winning they're winning mm. if yes. he's winning yes you're winning yes because what happens is when you create a community when it, when you when you celebrate everybody's wins, yes. everybody gets better. Rising tide floats all boats. That's the quote, bro. That's yes. the quote. And I think if we can keep ingraining that in dinner table conversations with kids in schools and art schools and art centers and building that in artists, and mm. when we realize that um, and don't have that scarcity mindset yeah. of sharing information, knowledge, right. fucking drop down the gatekeepers, bro. Just right. watch out. Nizel's coming after all those gatekeepers, bro. <laughs> I'll be there. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm, I'm, I'm going to outlast everybody, bro. Mm, That's, I, I already know that. Like, I've known that since I was 18. Like, yeah. you're going to be do, see me doing this shit when I was 60, 70. Yeah. It's getting recorded, bro. I'll be here at 75, yeah. fucking probably half dead, but keep going, you know? Like, it's just like, you know when you got, like, you know it. Yeah, you know it I know. and i think um i think when you can build that type of mindset i'm not saying i'm better than anybody no, it's know. like it's realizing that it's always you versus you yeah and i think when you understand yourself and your awareness and you and you and you go through those experiences as understanding who you want to be and the person that you're becoming is more important than the person that right. you've been right. i think i think there's always strength in that so mm. yeah I think I think that's it. Word sounds good to me. <laughs> Fuck man, what a session, bro! We really went through the through the oh. rides today, bro. Yeah, I didn't I didn't feel like doing this at the beginning, to be honest. You hyped oh. me up. No, bro, and we, we got this. It. We got this awesome setup, so it got me psyched. Uh, make sure you go watch this session on YouTube. It's a three camera setup. Um, if you've been enjoying all the sessions, um, make sure you go chuck us a review, or actually fuck the review. Go share it with a mate, yeah. to be honest. And I think um, somebody that's like in a space where you feel like you see the potential but maybe they just might need like a little whisper yeah because like i've got such amazing friends man that they share stuff like because there's so much information in this world and they share stuff to me privately and they say hey bro i think this message might might make impact and i think there's a message for and a, and a voice for everyone in this world and i heard somebody say this and everybody has their time to receive those messages. And you've said that patent to me mm -hmm. on so many occasions. And something that I really admire about you, which I've learned is um, your self-control. And I think I've said that mm. in other sessions with you, mm. but I still see that on a daily basis. And um, and I think you should be incredibly proud of that. Mm. And, and I, I think a lot of my, like the environments I've grown in, uh, like that, that that's a skill set yeah. and um, that that takes very long to develop and yeah. and I, personally i don't think i've fully mastered it and i don't i think it's a human it's a human thing you know everyone's human but it's it's quite cool to see your your self-control mm. and your ability to have that awareness and yeah. i think it goes back to you know your your inner belief mm. and and you know your internal belief system whether it's god whether it's love you know yeah. whatever it is it's it's pretty cool to see that. Yeah, it comes from a lot of impulsivity and mistakes to <laughs> to know that. Yeah, it's it's worth it. But yeah, I appreciate that. That's good, bro. And that's uh, session number ninety three, bro. Can you believe it? It's over an hour long. Uh, magic times. But yeah, bro, it could go forever. Yeah, this literally could go forever. But I think people would listen to it longer too. Man, man we so killed it. You gotta this go longer. Is, yeah, we gotta go longer, right? Um, but yeah, man, thanks for coming on, and I will Pleasure. see you hopefully in November. Yep. Um, 
probably do a session yeah. Colorado. Yeah, like, for why don't we do two sessions a year? That'd be sick. <laughs> yeah, I know. It keeps us accountable. It keeps us in touch. Too. Bro, I can't so. believe we've been doing this for three years now, though. That's, fucking... That actually is pretty wild, to be honest. It'll be interesting to see what... Bro, I'm almost on 100 sessions. That I'm. That's so crazy, dude. Like, I remember when the first one came out, and I think I was, like, number, number like, six or yes. something, too. So that's even crazier, but... You're the one doing all the work. <laughs> you should you should be proud. What are you, what are you going to do for the hundredth? Man, I think it's good, it's going to be a celebration episode. Yeah. I haven't really thought about it, but I think it's going to be it's going to be a good reflection mm, of yeah. like how the how like I really like I want, I've seen my um, conversation style yeah. change from episode oh, yeah. one to like yeah, now I'm, so much more I feel healthy. like if I listen to myself, I'm started to be slightly better with like summarizing. Yeah. I used to be like a shit listener. Yeah. So me doing this, uh, I think I'm improving my listening skills mm. and just building the reps, man, mm. to be honest. Well, never, ever, every time I've been on, I've always felt like you're a good listener. So it's good to think that that's minor improvement <laughs> there. But <laughs> I'm glad you noticed all those little things. Oh, that's great. But man, appreciate it. I'll Got catch you, you on the next one. Thanks you, everybody listening to the Be Wolf Sessions. I will catch you guys next Monday. Let's Later. go. Keeping you, keeping a wolf. Woo.